But the most important thing about this one is it's got its dust wrapper. Dust wrappers in bookselling are one of those things which are fundamental for people who collect 20th century books. They insist that they have the, especially in literature, that they have the, they are as original as possible. Even price clipping is frowned on by the collector. They like it with the price on it. Let me ask you, of in your 40 years, what was the most interesting book you ever found? I think well, it actually was a letter. A letter from Admiral Lord Nelson, who had chased the French out to the West Indies. All their ships were full of troops. They were going to land on the West Indies, take over the West Indies, therefore control the sugar huh. trade. They got out there. They decided that they wouldn't land the troops. So they came back. And when they came back, we were all ready to go for Trafalgar. Huh. And this letter was the first indication that the French had hightailed it home. I got, so, I got so excited, I did all the research, I couldn't find any copy of this letter in anything recorded, ah. I couldn't find, couldn't find it anywhere. Ah. And so it was, it was a moment of history yeah. in your hands that this letter was that vitally important news yeah. that wow. had to be sent to warn them to be ready for them. This is an astonishing prayer book which was hand-coloured plates. Oh, really? So, huh. uh, again, done in a, only a very short period of time. Wow. Absolutely stunning piece of Victoriana. Huh. Uh, what period again, is that? Re reflected uh, 1838. Huh. Um, just, be just before these came out. Huh. But you can imagine yeah. a bookshop with those in the window. Yeah. Huh. Absolutely fantastic. The books I own that I would save before anything else are three books called the Gooseberry Growers Register. Huh. Now, when our Prime Minister asks what makes us British, uh, the Gooseberry Growers Register has the answer. Huh. This is a little series of books done between sort of 1858 and 1865, which records every gooseberry competition in the counties of Derbyshire, Nottinghamshire, Cheshire. And these competitions were held in pubs, and each year the pub would have a prize of £10 for the largest gooseberry. Next thing is, not only was it recorded, uh -huh. but it was then printed. I see. And then published. And you had those. Uh... And when I got these three books initially, there was only one record of them, uh -huh. and that was at the Royal Horticultural Society Library. Oh, really? They were the only people who got these books. Uh -huh. So that's uh, important but, history there. So it's a wonderful piece of social yeah. history. Huh. But it's also a, a fascinating insight in, into what I think makes us British. And that is, we are competitive. We like a drink. We like to record things. We like to publish them. Huh. And, and also, therefore more it, it books also, here than anything. It also contains obituaries of great gooseberry growers as well. Oh, really? So we like to remember. <laughs> and honour the gooseberry gr so growers. So that, the, the, the smoke alarm goes, I'm straight down those stairs, straight into the bookcase, grab the three books straight in my pocket. That's interesting. Well, yeah. it, 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 as, as, as I say, but see, I when, never... when, you, when you ask me, you want to have fun. Yeah. There is the fun. Yeah. There is the social history. Right, yeah. Um, so when you go to the pub, meet a friend, do you talk about your gooseberry books? Well, <laughs> no, often people say, you know, what, what is the most valuable book you've got? Ah. And in, in monetary terms, not very valuable. But for yeah. me, yeah. immensely valuable in ah. telling me who I am. Well, tell me, how are things going now with your wife and book selling you've been doing it for 40 Fine, years yes, we well about f 
five years ago my wife said I'm not enjoying it anymore so I was very perplexed by this uh, in questioning her it turned out it was a her sight uh, so I said look you must never do things you don't want to do if you have a choice in life you must never do things you don't want to do you must always only do the things you want because if you don't right again it's too short it, it has always been equitable and therefore Marie used to do one Saturday here and I'd do the next and so it was one on one off and it was what a glorious life I've led I've only had to be at work one day in a fortnight that isn't to say the rest of the time I'm not working but I only have to be at work one day in a fortnight not a bad life is it no. not a bad, bad setup.